All right, now it's time to solder the uh, now it's time to solder the base plate to the shank. Now, one of the big, the most important things is to ensure that your ring is centered all the way around. So one way, one thing you can do is you can kind of draw a line on it halfway, and then you know that you need to put those shanks equally. Now, if you don't draw it half, if you don't draw it well. Then it's gonna mess it up. But that's one way. Also, you can look from the top, close one eye and make sure it's clear, it's it's straight that way. And look from the side, look from all the different sides to ensure that that shank uh, is centered. Now, I just centered it, but in reality, I need to actually dip it in the boric acid. Um, and so I need to dip them in the boric acid and then I need to burn them and then center it. So once those are burned off, then I'll center it and I'll be good to go. So I can take this, these are hot, right? It's metal. So I'll take this and I can, with tweezers, I can adjust it to what I need. And if, if, if it's, it cool, it may, may cool down. All right, so that seems to be pretty good. I'm now gonna take my flux and I'm gonna put flux right at the base of those um, prongs. And I'm gonna burn the flux. And as I burn the flux, it kind of creates that crust, that crustiness. And now I'm going to put four pieces of solder on that ring, one on each of the prongs. And I'm doing my very best not to touch or not to bump those prongs. Because if I do, then it may bump them out of sink or out of out of square out of um out of what i wanted and so i want to be very carefully very careful in my putting these prongs or these these pieces of solder now i can readjust it very carefully so that the solder is as close to these areas as possible. Almost leaning on. Leaning on the prongs. I double check. Make sure it's square, and then it's time to solder. Now remember, solder goes where the heat is. So what I want to make sure is I want to I want to heat from this back side so that the solder flows from the inside underneath, attaching the prongs to the base plate. And I'm keeping this torch alive. Okay. You don't want to just keep it in one spot. Keeping those torches alive, heating it from both sides. All 
I need to, I can come back and make sure it's all connected. I don't want that ring to get really hot. So I'm just tapping it. I'm just barely, barely touching it. Making sure that solder flows underneath those prongs. Looks like it's all done. We're ready to go. And you can tell that because you see the solder right here. You see this little bead attaching it. Okay, you know that's that, that's how it is. That you know that's uh, soldered correctly. So I'm gonna take this, put it in the water, and go put it in the pickle bath. Now that you uh, you soldered, you should see that it's all attached. It's all attached really nicely. Okay, now that's why this is why it's so important to s file the buttre or the the shank before so that it has a smooth transition right it may be it may not be perfect you may have to sand it a little bit but it should be pretty nice and your your setting looks nice if you look at it from the top everything should be hidden the base plate um and so this should be what your ring should look like at this point you can go in and sand some of these areas, right? If you need to, you can get a half round file and you can, you can file some of these areas. Now the difficult thing, this isn't a bad thing to do. The difficult thing is do not use the flat side. You want to use the half round and you'll file and you can come back with 500 grit sandpaper and you can sand and you can see in there right there I cut that a little too bad it should have been a little bit better but you can come in here and sand um, it all this is where you do your final touches right you don't want to file any of this outside you want to keep it round but you can come in here if you need to and just do some nice, some small sanding. Right, that's that angle right there is perfect. Whereas this one, we could have done better. But um, you learn. Even even teachers make mistakes. So you can kind of sand on a thou with a thousand grit, five hundred grit, thousand. And you're just cleaning up these edges. Okay. Now, once this is done, it's now time to set your stone. Okay. We have not put the stone in the setting after soldering the base plate until now. So you're going to check to make sure your prongs uh, are all straight. And if you need to, you can get square nose pliers and you can kind of... You can lightly bend the, these out just a little bit. Now, um, I like to, uh, your ring will expand. There will be some give and take metal with the heat and the cold and whatnot. And sometimes the, the stones don't sit flush. Uh, most of the time they do, but sometimes they don't. So what I like to do is I like to get some some uh, I like to get some sawdust um, and this is just normal sawdust and I just get a pinch of sawdust and I just sprinkle it in there and then I hit it and I, I tap it until it's kind of all around and if I need to I can kind of encourage it Okay, until it's nice and soft, until it's nice and even. 
And then I'll take my stone, which has been attached to the leash. I'll take my stone and I will drop my stone in the setting. And I will now push it in and I'll make sure it's nice and square. And I'll look at it from all different angles and make sure that it's square, that it's put in. If I need to, I can tap it. But you want to make sure that it is square. Now, after this point, it's now time to push the, the bezel in. So what you're going to use is you're going to use this pusher. It has a square um, front. And what you're going to do is you're going to put it on one side, and you're going to put it on the bezel, and you're just going to roll it up. But what you're gonna to make sure the square the 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 stone stays um, centered, you're gonna go, you're gonna push opposite. So you'll push here. You'll push. Imagine this is a clock. 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. You'll push 12 and 6, 9 and 3, like 1 and 7, 10 and 4. And you, the first push is very soft. You're barely even pushing it. And then you'll push it again and then again until it's all the way pushed in. And I like to keep my thumb on the top just so it doesn't scratch the, the stone. Um, if I slip and I take it and I'll just slowly and I'll zoom in so you can see what you'll do is you'll just slow, you'll just bend it up. And then I switch it over, finger there, and I bend it up. Go opposites, and I'm always working opposites. Until all the edges are pushed in. And I'm just leaning it up against the bezel or the buttress and then going to the bezel. But I'm, I'm, I'm working opposites. And once all the sides are pushed in, I'll do it again, only this time I do medium pressure, and so I push and I roll up. I, I'm pushing down with my thumb on the stone, and then I'm pushing over. Pushing down, rolling it over, I'm working the opposite. I'm not letting this pusher push in or kind of touch that stone. And then I'll do it again, and this time I'm pushing a little bit harder. Final go. But always making sure that I'm not slipping. I'm not going to slip and scratch my stone. Now if you notice, right, it's pretty even all the way around. You don't want to see a giant bulge on one side and it really low on the other. And there you go. That is the stone. That is this. Uh, it's now set. If you look, it's pretty symmetrical. Now it's time to polish. Now the hard thing about polishing is that you do not, do not want your stone to get polished. So, so. you've got this part right here. You don't want to touch the top of the ring. So what you're going to do is you're just going to polish these sides. And if you come right here, you see I'm just keeping the ring away from the stone. Okay? I don't want to push the stone right up against it. So I'll push it in the corner. I'll go around. around here 
push it into the corner there. I don't want to lose control of this ring. If I do, bad things will happen. Okay, if I need to, I can go and polish it again. But I'm keeping that, um, that stone away from the actual root, the actual triple. Okay? So now I'm going to go to the rouge and do the same thing. I push it into the corner. I keep that stone away from the polishing wheel. And it may get a little bit polished. Um, if you have a white stone, it may redden it. It may redden it. Okay. 